The first things that can be configured in a Plan 9 system is the kernel and the boot configuration file. I'll start with the kernel and before that, uh, some tips on how to tweak things. Uh, Ninefront has moved over to Git, so if you're familiar with Git, you can make your own branches and tweak things that way. But for doing your own local changes, the easiest way is to use bind. So my file server is fine using the default kernel, but my new CPU server needs USB drivers. Um, so instead of reading NVRAM off the thumb drive, NVRAM needs to be built into the kernel. And also my terminal has a Wi-Fi card that needs firmware files. Uh, to load that at boot, they also need to be included in the kernel. So rather than change the actual kernel, I'm going to make copies of the files I want to change and put them in my own directory in my user's directory here. I can then bind them before the stock kernel and build them. Um, so I'll, I made some scripts to do that. So here's the one for building the Wi-Fi driver into the PC kernel. So I'm going to bind them before. The C flag allows, the file, uh, allows for file creation as the object files and some of the other stuff will end up being written into the user's directory. Uh, this means overall that the stock kernel files don't change and when I run the update script, it won't undo my changes or make a git complain. So let's go over the CPU server uh, one here. So in it, I edited the make file and this is so that it'll output a specific file name for this kernel. And that's basically the only change I really need to put in there. I gave it its own custom configuration script. And the only thing that really needed to be changed here was at the bottom, I told it to include um, NVRAM, which holds these sort of password tokens for the host owner so that it can authenticate with the file server at boot without needing somebody at the terminal to actually type in a password. Um, and of course, there's also the actual NVRAM file which is a little binary thing. So if I go ahead and run that script, I can do build, it was PC 64 NVR. And now if I look in, or I'll just change directory there, do sys source nine PC 64. I can see that my thing's in here, and so is my make file. So if I go ahead and build it, it'll go ahead and build. And there it's done. Now if I look at the files in here, I will see at the top here my custom kernel with the name that I wanted. So that way I can distinguish it from the standard PC or nine PC 64 kernel. Now, if I look in, actually I could just open it up in here. If I tell it to get and load the files. You can see that in those files actually got made in my home directory since it was mounted before the, uh, the default kernel one. So I run make clean. It'll clean all that up. I can see there's nothing in this directory and it's actually going to clean them out of this one. So for the terminal that needs the uh, Wi-Fi driver, oops, uh, delete that. Uh, PC 64 Wi-Fi. So again, I just sort of edited the make file just to give me a custom name for my kernel. And that's the only real difference. So the kernel, um, the background kernel configuration scripts will check in lib firmware for any firmware files. And it will build those into the kernel if they're there. I don't currently have any in there. I don't really like using it because if I put a bunch of firmwares in here, every kernel will get them. So if I put the Intel Wi-Fi firmware in here and then build a Raspberry Pi kernel, it'll pull it in. Um, the easiest way to deal with that again, just go ahead and use namespace stuff. So if I make another window here, run build PC64 Wi-Fi. So now in this window, if I look in lib firmware, 
it will actually have the firmware file in it. But again, per process namespaces, uh, that's not going to appear in this window. And again, if I go to um, sys source 9 PC64, I can see that my files are included in there. And if I run make in that directory, it will build the, uh, the kernel and give it that name and include the firmware with it. So once the kernel starts to boot, one of the first things it does is it will load the values from the plan9.ini file. In the case of a file server or standalone terminal, this will be with the kernel on the 9FAT partition. Uh, for systems that um, pixie boot, that will be in this directory. And the plan9INIs are basically named with the MAC address, but it does the same thing. So when the kernel loads, it'll read all these in. Eventually it will go through a few processes and all these values here will be loaded as environmental variables, which can then be seen in the uh, env directory. So if I go and look at env, I can see things like, you know, the VGA size gets loaded in. Um, let's see. So auth, there's that there. So that's where these some of these um, things come from, is that they're actually just copied over from the plan9.ini file. So yeah, the common stuff you'll find in the uh, plan9.ini file are things like, you know, which, uh, which kernel to boot, boot arguments, setting up you know, the mouse and the monitor, uh, the ACPI is for things like the power management stuff for PCs. This will allow you to, you know, use a FS halt to kill the power. Um, this is a nice one. If you notice that it takes a long time to boot and it's trying to do IPv6 settings and you don't have an IPv6 network, you can set that to just make it uh, ignore it. Um, let's see, this one here is like my new CPU server. Since it uh, has an issue with the USB right now, I have it just ignore all the USB stuff. Um, here's where I can set the NV RAM since it's off the uh, installed in the kernel, so it'll show up in boot and how to read it. Um, so this one has no boot prompt. So on the uh, terminal, it'll actually stop there and ask, do you want to do TLS by default or something else? With the CPU server, it'll just automatically do TLS, which means contact the file server on the network. Sorry, you're given the IP address for that and the auth server. So you can go through the uh, plan9.ini man page. It's in section eight, um, and you can see all the various settings in here. I'll have links to the other man pages and stuff in the description. Um, I know for one, if you get into playing with um, like embedded systems, like hacking around on ARM development boards or Wi-Fi routers. Um, one of them that's handy is having this console option to tell it to send the default um, shell uh, out the UART console and putting the settings in for that if you need to. Um, there's also like some debug options and stuff in here. And this isn't like necessarily an exclusive list. You can put any sort of key value pair into plan9.ini, uh, provided it isn't already used by something else. And also that you, if you don't prefix it with an asterisk, anything with an asterisk in front of it won't automatically be added to um, the environmental variable device slash env. Uh, so if you don't add an asterisk and it's not already used, you can put anything else you want in there and you can have your own uh, custom scripts or programs use that variable uh, later on in the system. So uh, I hope this gives you some ideas on how to boot up your nine front systems. Um, next, I'll be covering the second half of the boot up uh, configuration scripts. And uh, until then, have fun.